Greetings, welcome to lab four, part one. So in this lab, what we're gonna do is go over the basic idea of what a confidence interval is all about. And we'll do that by working through some of the exercises in the textbook, kind of like grist for the mill to kind of give us a way of looking at it. So um, I've already gone in and opened up an R markdown file and got it going to get started on this lab. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the first exercise that we're gonna to do to kind of help us get going with this is exercise 4.7. Relaxing after work. Oh my gosh, that's what I like to do, right? So the General Social Survey is a sociological survey used to collect data on demographic characteristics and attitudes of residents of the United States. In 2010, the survey collected responses from 1,154 U.S. residents. The survey is conducted face-to-face -face with in-person interview of a randomly selected sample of adults. The questions in the survey, or one of the questions, there's many questions in the survey, is after average workday, how many hours do you have to relax or pursue activities that you enjoy? Like, you know, reading statistics books or something like that. A 95% confidence interval for the 2010 GSS survey is from 3.53 to 3.83 hours. Interprets this interval in context of the data. Okay, so... Let's go back to the whiteboard for a minute here, and let's go talk about what the heck do we mean by a confidence interval in the first place, okay? So what is a confidence interval? Well, the best way of thinking about it is this, is that you have some distribution. Oh, excuse me, let me thin up my pen here a little bit. We have some distribution of average number of hours we get to spend, or Americans get to spend after work relaxing, okay? And we don't really know what the shape of that distribution is. It could be any shape. Let's let's say just for a moment that it's 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 skewed to the right. Okay, and that's not an unreasonable guess because what we know is that some people have more hours. They have you know more cush jobs than others, so they have more time after after school than other people do. So this this x axis here is going to be the number of hours that relax, right? Okay, now what we, we did, or what this survey did, is they came in here and they took a sample from this particular population. So this is a representation or my model of the population here. And they came in and they took that sample and they wanted to get an estimate for the average number of hours spent relaxing. And when they did that, they came out of this, they took a sample size, the N here, was, was rather large. It was a huge number, wasn't it? It was like um, 1,500 something. Let's go back, take a quick peek here. I don't have that quite memorized. It was 1,154. So 1,154 individuals. And they took those, those folks, all of their responses for their hours that they spent relaxing, and they fed those into a machine. We'll call that machine X bar. And what that machine does is it takes all of these numbers, adds them up, and divides by the number of numbers, and it pops out of the machine. What comes out of here, bink, is a sample X bar. In other words, a sample mean. Now, that's just one sample mean, okay? And that's a you know great estimate of what the population value for um, number of hours spent relaxing is, but that is, if you take the analogy from the book, I thought it was really well done, that is like trying to catch a fish with a spear versus catching a fish with a net. We have, what we just threw is this, the spear. We have a much better chance of getting what the true population mean is by t casting a wider net, so to speak. In other words, what we want to know, the question of the day is, what, they're, what they want to know here, is what is this value here of mu from the population? That's what X bar is trying to estimate. Remember from our previous discussions that X bar is our population, excuse me, is the sample mean which estimates our population mean mu. Now, if we came back in and we did a grundle, just a boatload of samples, all of 1,154 from this original population, and we gathered up a whole bunch of X bars, what we would see is that the distribution of the X bars will be bell-shaped. Hopefully you got that from the reading. But the distribution of X bars will definitely be bell-shaped, and it will be centered at the exact same mean. In other words, the mean of all of my X bars that I gather will be centered the exact same mean as the original population one. In other words, these two means are the same. Let me, I'm just going to get a little color going here. Let me circle those in red for you. This one and this one are the same. Those are the same values. Now, the other thing that we, will, we saw in our previous work 
is that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, that gets a name. That's called our standard error. And that's equal to the standard deviation of this population back up here. So this model here has population standard deviation sigma. So those two are the same, divided by the square root of the sample size n. So let me just again circle these in red for you so you see that one and that one are still the same ones also, OK? All right, so how, how does this have to do with the confidence interval? This is basically, by the way, what we're describing right here is referred to as the central limit theorem. It tells us that something about the sampling distribution of the mean or the sampling distribution of x, x bar, OK? Well, basically what happens is this, is we came in and we got one particular sample mean. So I'm going to change colors. I'm going to go into um, purple here. And purple is what we know. And what we don't know is what is in the black. All of that other stuff, notice I just have symbols. I don't have any numbers involved. And we went in and we calculated a 95% confidence interval for that mean. Okay. And so um, if you take and add the endpoints of that interval together, let me go ahead and write the interval down for us here. We know that our interval went from 3.53 to 3.83. I know that the sample mean that was calculated from here is going to be equal to 3.53 plus 3.83 divided by 2. Now, why do I know that? Well, um, before we go any further into my explanation of what a confidence really, interval really is, let's remind ourselves how it's calculated, okay? So this is, again, another formula. So we'll go back in black here. Is we know that a confidence interval is calculated by taking the point estimate and adding to that and subtracting from that the margin of error. Okay, so for, for the sampling distribution of the mean, the point estimate is x bar plus or minus our margin of error. Well, like our margin of error is the number of standard deviations, that's given by the z star, times the standard error, which in our case is going to be um, s divided by the square root of n, okay? So notice that the mean sits smack dab in the middle. The sample mean sits smack dab in the middle of this confidence interval. In other words, if we were to take and put our um, numbers on a number line here, this 3.53 and 3.83, let me go ahead and give us a fresh screen to do that. Whereas if this was 3.53, and this was 3.83, we know that x bar has to reside smack dab right in the middle between those two. Why? Well, because from here to here is x bar plus the margin of error, the z star times s over the square root of n. And then to get over this direction, what was that? Well, that's x bar minus z star times s over the square root of n. So notice that if I want to find out what the mean is, or the sample mean, excuse me, the sample mean from my confidence interval, well, I just need to find the midpoint between the two endpoints of the interval. So take them, add them up, and divide them by two, okay? All right, so let's go back to our, our whiteboard that we're working on here. So what that tells me then is that this number right here, that, that sample mean is going to be 3.68. Okay, so let me let me see if we can if we go back to where we can finish up our discussion. So we come in to the population. We took a sample of 1,054. We fed that to X bar. We got back a sample mean. And now we want to build a confidence interval based upon that sample mean. So we come over here and remember, again, I don't know the black distribution. That's why everything's with symbols. I have no idea what that is. And I come here and I plot, let's say just for the sake of argument, I plot this number right here, 3.68. And that's my best guess at what mu is. Notice it's not going to be too far away from mu if I did a good job in my estimate. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But this time, let's we'll assume for the moment that it did. So if, if that works, then what that tells me is that I'm going to move out my margin of error either side of this 3.68. And what I know by doing that is that I have trapped 95% 
of all of the possible data within that interval based upon my x bar as being the center of the universe. In other words, if the distribution was to be drawn over the top of x bar, it would look something like that. And if I was good, if I was lucky, my red interval would contain mu within it. It will contain the true black population mean that I don't really know what that number is. I'm just fairly confident that it's between 3.53 and 3.83. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of stuff there real quick. We're going to say this. I'm going to go back over this about three more times in this lab. So hopefully by the third time I say everything that I just said, it will start to make sense. So let's go back and see if we can actually... Um, answer their question back here in our studio based upon our discussion. It says, inter interpret this interval in the context of the data. Well, in context of the data, what it really says is that with 95% confidence, we're going to come back in a few minutes and talk about the specific definition of confidence. That's a very important definition. The population mean number of hours spent relaxing versus doing statistics is between, uh, let's see where my numbers again, 3.53 hours and 3.83 hours. Okay. So, well, we're going to come right back here in part B to talk about what does the 95% confidence level mean in this context. Okay, <clears throat> well, 95% confidence level is going to be the same in this context as it with any of them. And th this is an important, um, very important definition of what we mean by confidence. What is the definition of confidence? So let's go back over to the whiteboard here for just a moment. And let's give ourselves a new whiteboard. So... What, what the heck is confidence? Well, it's really, in many ways, it's just going back and using the empirical rule again. Confidence level really, in many ways, is based upon what we mean by the empirical rule. So let's just a quick review of what we mean by the empirical rule, better known many times as the 68.95.99.7 rule. And it says if you have a normal distribution with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma, and if I go out one standard deviation either side of the mean, I know that there's going to be about 68% of my data reside in that interval. And if I go out about two standard deviations, either side of the mean, in other words, I go from there to there, I know that I'm going to have roughly 95% of my data. And if I go out three standard deviations, I'll have 99.7% of all data. So from there to there would be 99.7%. So what that means is this. If that's mu right there, and this distance, let me change colors here for just a second. If this distance right here is sigma, then I know that the following. I know that mu plus or minus 2 sigma within that interval captures 95% of the data. the values of x if we put on there, okay? Now, what, what we found in this particular um, reading is that we can upgrade this number 2 quite a bit and that the 2 here was just a rough estimate and that if you go in to the standard normal distribution and you take a look using um, Q norm at what the values really are so that it's 95% of the data in here, you'll see that this lower value of down here the lower value of z star, as we call it, is our, our z stars are the number of standard deviations is what you want to think about them. This, this value right here is at negative 1.96, and this value right here is at a positive 1.96. So notice if you round that off, it comes out to be 2. So we kind of upgraded this, this formula just a smidge, and we said, hey, that's mu plus or minus 1.96 sigma, okay, gets us, gets us two standard deviations. Okay, so now what, what is the confidence level? Well, the confidence is this 95%, isn't it? And so what the confidence level does is it basically sets the width of this interval. So the more confident you are, say we went out to 99.7, well, if we went out to 99.7, that's going to be roughly three standard deviations, isn't it, right? 
we went out 99.7. So this number right here pretty much is one of the two ways that we set the width of our confidence interval. Now, what, what actually is um, the physical interpretation of the confidence? Well, let's go back to our previous drawing here for just a minute. Notice that this purplish sort of graph that I've drawn here is one possible thing that could have happened. If I came in and took another sample of 1,154 and I did it again, I would maybe most likely would get a different value of x bar, wouldn't I? And let's say that that time it came out looking like this. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I probably would have captured mu again. We'll say I do it again. Do it. A, this one's a blue one here, and I, I draw it one more time. And let's say maybe this time I just, you know, bad luck. I get a distribution that shifted way down to the left. Well, what the 95% says is that if I did this 100 times, in other words, if I kept going in and taking samples of 1,154, and I did that, say, 100 times, and every one of those I plotted my value of x bar and pretended it was the center of the universe and drew a distribution above it plus or minus 1.96 um, standard errors above and below it, what I would see is that 95 of them would have captured the true population mean mu and about five of them would not have. Let's see if we can make that something a little more real. So let's pretend for just a moment here that you've got, you own a 19 1999 rust blue Corolla okay and so you have this just wonderful car I'll do my, my best drawing of a car here oh that's just <laughs> that's a normal curve let's try that again so you've got this rust blue Corolla okay so here's your beautiful car and what you know about this car because you haven't done a tune-up on this thing in a while is that um, when you go out to put the key into the ignition, sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. So let's say that 95% of the time it starts. And 5% of the time it fails. So what, what, would that, what would that mean? Okay, well what that means is this. It says that when you go out to the car, you've got a 95% chance that the car is going to start. And that is before you stick the key into the car. Once you put the key in the car and you turn it, either the car started or it didn't. So notice that the probability of the car starting, it, it is before you put the key in, right? After you start the car, either it started or it didn't, one or the other. Well, that's exactly the same thing that's going on here. Excuse me, back to the right place here. That's exactly the same thing that's going on here with our confidence interval. Either you captured it or you didn't. The process works 95% of the time, and 5% of the time it fails. So a really good fundamental way of thinking about what confidence is, is it's the probability that the process worked. We have a 95% probability that the process used worked to capture the mean and a 5% chance that it failed. Okay, so I'm going to put this in caps so you, you get it. It is not not the probability that the mean is in the interval. That is not what we mean by confidence. It's the probability that it works. It's kind of like going and pulling a slot machine arm. Before you go up there and pull that slot machine arm, let's say it's a really good one, good slot machine. You got a 95% chance that you're going to lose and you got a 5% chance that you're going to win. But once you've pulled that arm on the one-arm bandit, either you won or you lost. The probability question is off the table. Okay, suppose re researchers think that a 90% confidence level would be more appropriate for this interval. Would this new interval be smaller or larger than the 95% confidence interval? Assume the standard deviation remains constant since 2010. Okay, well, we just talked about this when we were drawing our picture earlier. Let's go back and review it real quick. Is that what we know is that when you change the confidence level, 
what you're doing is you're basically changing z star. You're changing the width of the interval. So if you go back again, thinking about um, the just the standard normal for just a second to help us figure out what those z star values would be, notice that a 95% confidence interval would be out here. In other words, you'd have a longer distance between your two endpoints, where if you went for a 90% confidence interval, notice that you're going to have less area. You're going to shorten it up. It'll be smaller. You can think about it that you're casting a more narrow net. And so you are less confident, if you think about it in terms of the words, you are less confident that you captured the population mean using this process than you would have been if you used a 95% confidence interval. So going back here to our studio to type up our answer. It says, suppose the researchers think a 90% confidence interval will be more appropriate. Will the interval be smaller or larger? The interval will be, whoops, I don't need to yell and shout at you anymore, do I? Okay, well, that's hopefully um, going to help you a little bit getting you started to think about the appropriate parts of the confidence interval. Be sure and get some of the stuff into your comp book. This is a great one to have in there in terms of understanding what we mean by confidence.